Hello and welcome back to Let's Play Jane's Fighters Anthology. Last time we uh, intercepted a large rebel attack on our base, inflicting almost total casualties. Well, we inflicted total casualties on the attacking enemy aircraft and even went over and bothered some aircraft patrolling the rebel side of the border. So now let's see what they have in store for us today. Ghost Rider. Bir Hasana Air Base. Date August 3rd. Local time 23 hours. Weather clear. Situation. Logistical targets such as fuel and munitions depots must be destroyed in order to slow the rebel advance on the Suez Canal. Mission... Bleh, can't speak today. Mission objective. The target is a depot supplying rebel armor units in the north. Use the B-2 stealth to penetrate the enemy's air defenses and destroy the buildings, fuel tanks, and loading dock that make up the depot. Threat suppression data, ground opposition, SA-3, ZSU-23-4, ZIF-31s, air opposition, possible F-16s, Mirage 3s, and Mirage 2000s. Lovely. Another stealth mission, so... Looks like we're going fairly deep into enemy territory there. And uh, we'll be near to one of their air bases, so we'll have to watch out for that. And we do not get a wingman this time. I like how it... I like how it actually lets us choose, but I don't think there's you could carry enough ordnance otherwise. Eh, I'm not interested in precision bombing, so, uh... I wish there was, like, an 8-pack of these. Actually, I'm kind of surprised that they don't, uh, have an option for the 3 and 6-packs, but whatever. Well, then we get 32. I think that'll be good. So we have a total of 72 bombs, fuel. We don't need all this fuel. Just in an effort to make ourselves a little bit lighter and faster, I'm going to take a 50% fuel load. painful as it is to actually click. I wish this is where it'd be nice to have a slider for a course adjustment and then um, and then use the plus and minus for a fine adjustment. Because I mean that full fuel load is like if you're gonna bomb halfway across the world. Then we're not. This is like for the B2 this is like literally the equivalent of, uh, you know, taking off from, you know, let's say Milwaukee and landing in Chicago. <laughs> All right, 91,000 pounds, that should do us. All right, so we got a fighter escort, that's good. You'll notice we have the uh, bomb site for our, um, for our um, target viewer here. We got a pair of X-31s. Let's look at the map. Oh, we do have a radar. What's this guy? A tank. Oh, yeah, because of the IR. Okay. <laughs> it was, it's, yeah, it was showing up for a second when we turned on our radar, so I was confused by that. Uh, let's go out to... We got lots, lots of hostiles on the uh, scope there, so I think we're, uh... It looks like they're hopefully moving to engage. But, uh, let's get some altitude. Oh, she does not perform well in a climb. Oh, they... Okay, I guess they're just gonna leave me undefended, okay. I don't like, uh... Let's turn south. Because, as it is, we'll collide and they'll shoot me down. There we go. The other thing I could do is, uh... We could hug the ground, but that will expose us to AAA fire. They'll hear us coming. Okay, for now I'm 
is interested in a 25 mile radius and avoiding this guy. I'm a little disappointed that the fighters didn't, you know, escort him. Surely they could have spared, uh, I mean, all they need is our, our uh, two-ship formation from, uh, Belusa, who will clear the skies of all these fighters. But, I don't know. I guess the real us is off doing other important things. They turned away, so that's good, but we do have more fighters around Checkpoint Bravo, so I want to... Oh. Don't want to do that. So what I want to do is... Um, if we can get this guy to turn north and get them up here, then I can come in from the east behind them and take out the... Um, take out the target and then probably evac to the southeast and then east and then come back up to uh what is this that near shana or wherever we're based off of i forget already so so yeah the uh, life of a stealth bomber pilot isn't nearly as exciting as the uh, life of a stealth fighter pilot <laughs> it's mostly just sneaking around and uh, hoping no one notices you. Okay, we're 50 miles from the fuel depot, I think. We're in a good position right now to come in. Uh-oh, he turned. Oh, this is our opening. Full throttle. Inbound, this is Waypoint Bravo, bearing 280 to Uh, reduce range to 25 nautical miles. More fighters. Oh, F-16s are taking off. Of course. Of course. Alright, in that case, we must climb, climb, climb. If we're lucky, we can fly over them. Let's just be careful not to stall. Alright, we're behind them. Not exactly how I plan this working out. Alright, got a delivery of freedom here from uh, almost 40,000 feet. I just need to uh, we'll probably need to dive to actually uh, get a lock, but at the same time I kind of hesitant to because I don't want to exceed my max speed and I don't want to have to deploy uh, air brakes because that will increase my RWS. As you can see, we're already getting painted by uh, ground targets here. Nice little uh, turret there, I guess. Uh, we should be able... There's the depot. Six miles. I assume it's in the center of that cluster. Go. I got a delivery of freedom here. And then just for uh, shits and giggles. 
put some of the 2,000 pounders down. Hopefully that'll be enough. Got him. We're getting somebody. Did it in one run. Let's get the hell out of here. Uh, looks like the fighters have not locked onto us yet. So with that, we are going to try to weave our way through the north here. We should be a bit better in a climb now that we dropped half our bomb load. So let's climb back up to 40,000 feet get some distance between us and the ground radar so that way they can't vector the fighters in on us. As of right now, they just know that we bombed the shit out of their field people. There we go. That should give us a little speed. Those are, uh, let's see, Mirage 2000s, so those are decently new. want to stay away from them if possible. But yeah, they're all kind of heading south now, so they probably got called in. I can't wait to see the uh, report on how many uh, trucks and structures we destroyed there. If I wasn't busy pulling this baby out of a dive, I, I would have loved to have just watch the action from the ground, but... I kind of figured it would come up sooner than I expected because we are at such a high altitude. But uh, at least they make the target easy to see. <laughs> As for fuel, yeah, we're fine. We probably could have gone with like a 30% fuel load. Which uh, would make this thing uh, handle a fair bit better probably, but... It's nice to have the extra fuel so, you know, we can jam the throttle full blast and when we try to escape. And certainly, uh, climbing to 40,000 feet will probably improve our, uh, our fuel economy, too. We might... I'm hoping they turn. They don't turn soon. Okay, they turn. So we'll probably just fly over, uh, I think that says uh, Favid Air Base, and then we'll come in across the border that way. Oh boy, landing this baby's going to be fun. And I hope they aren't following us. Nope, okay. So let's bring us around to bearing 090. Five, six miles, three o'clock. All right. Ah, uh, we can probably uh, cut the throttle a bit and coast across the border and lose some altitude. I don't want to spend 10 minutes trying to dive so we can land. Alright, so we have F-22s patrolling our side of the border. So now that we're behind them we can feel a lot safer. Let's uh, narrow in our IWR, or our, sorry, our IR search pattern. Oops, we're drifting to uh, port a little bit there. There we go. We should see... Yeah, this is, I think, the uh, air base we're supposed to be landing at. So, 
switch over to navigation mode. I assume we're targeted on the base itself now. Uh, now let's see, which way do they want us to approach? I think, yeah, we gotta come in from this way. Boost up the throttle a little bit so we don't stall out. Alright. Start slowly turning. Because I want to burn off both speed and altitude here. I actually got to see one of these um, at EAA the other year during, uh, they called it the Year of the Bomber, and they had a showing of the B1, B2, and B52, and by God was it an amazing sight and sound, especially the B1, when it went into its turn and kicked in the afterburners. Beautiful. Alright, so. So we actually got flaps on this guy. Alright, we are still way too high, I think, so, yeah. Let's cut the throttle back a bit. Throw on some brakes. Clear to left. Wind at one free knot. Alright, I think we can throw the brakes off now. There we go. That's why we bring the speed down a little. That we can, uh... Hopefully coast right in. I'm not touching you. I'm not touching you. I'm not touching you. Oh god. We were 50 feet away from the ground. Oh. Okay, we, we touched down there. So a little early the runway. Uh, hopefully I'll get the hang of it a little bit better. But there you have it. Let's center up a little there. Bomber has landed. Actually, we'll probably just take this turn. Actually, do I even know where I'm going? Answer is... Oh, right here. Ah, okay, we can park right next to the uh, fighters then. But yeah, the engines are... This is... the. Engines actually behave more like I would expect the f even the fighter engines to, where they're, you could see, you know, with the fighter engine, we can quickly slam it in the afterburner and gain speed and altitude, like, immediately. Whereas the, um, uh, the B2, it took a long while, relatively speaking, before, uh, before they kicked in. I mean, we were 50 feet from the ground for a while so and that's more how I would expect a real-life jet engine you know fighter or bomber to uh, perform oh, come on I had it perfect but um you know just that delay because you know it doesn't the game changes it instantaneously but it's it's not how it works in real life in fact there's like an equation um, it pertains more to electrical engineering but I imagine it pertains to thrust as well um, where um, oh hey we uh, once again we can't 
get a full view. There we go. I think that's the best we're going to get it. But anyways, there's an equation that pertains to um, electrical engineering where um, you cannot have an instantaneous change in voltage or current because it would require infinite power. And likewise, in real life, you can't just instantaneously change from, you know, 15% throttle to afterburner. It just doesn't work like that. You got to give it a ramp up time. So... And with that, that is a successful mission, so I think we can end it here. Debrief. Kibrit Air Base. Date, August 3rd. Mission, Ghost Rider. Resolution, success. Combining stealth with awesome firepower, the B-2 can destroy a target before anyone realizes they're under attack. Good work torching that depot. So we had only 12 targets. I spotted, let's see, two, four, six. There are eight fuel tanks, uh, two loading docks, uh, a couple of warehouses, I think, and then uh, some trucks. So I wonder which of those were the objective. But uh, we destroyed one AAA, eight trucks, and 12 structures. So that's actually less devastation than I thought, but. And we'll perform maintenance on our B2. And with that, we should be ready to take on the, mi the next mission. So thank you all for watching, and stay tuned for next time, and we'll see you then.